Hello and welcome to the Sci Guys, the show where we talk about the crazy, weird, and wonderful stories from the science world. I'm Corey, and as always, I'm joined by my co-hosts, Jamp and Luke Gutfer. Hello. Hi. Howdy. This week, we're talking about the death of the dinosaurs. But first, we have a review from Apple. This one is five stars, and it says, Great listening! My husband recommended this podcast to me because of me pursuing a conservation biodegree, and it is so informative and fun! Such a well-spoken group with good chemistry and great information. Highly recommend. I love reading out the That's so nice! I wonder how many people, if we keep this up for enough years, how many people in the scientific field will have intersected with the Sci Guys podcast at some point? Very stressful. (laughs) Very stressful. (laughs) Whenever scientists review it, I'm like, this could go either way. (laughs) But it's mostly gone well. It has only ever gone well with scientists, which is which is good. It's better. That's quite nice. It feels. That's a good sign, I reckon. If you're a scientist and you'd like to leave a five star review, head to Apple Podcasts and leave a five star review. And if you're not a scientist, do it anyway. Just say you are one. Scientist, you'd like to leave a four star or less review. Do not. No, if don't. you pretend to be a scientist, we'll feel good. We're yeah. not open yeah. to peer review, unless it is fantastic <laughs> peer review. I love that you're saying here that scientists are our peers, but we have a question <laughs> for you all as well. So if you're listening with your ears on Apple or Spotify or anywhere else where you could listen to this podcast, head over to youtube.com forward slash sci guys and answer this question in the comments. What's your favorite dinosaur? Oh. What's your favorite dinosaur? Um... Velociraptor. Doesn't matter, it's dead. Oh. Chicken? <laughs> there might not be one day. <laughs> no, chicken! Quite like a chicken? Yeah. That's all right. That's, uh, yeah. Chicken. It's pretty boring. I like. Uh, I like me. Uh, I like me a triceratops. To be honest, oh, does matter. It's dead. About them. Don't mind. Okay. Yeah. Just checking. I'm well aware. There are dead chickens. Plenty of dead chickens. In fact, chickens are probably most known for being dead. Yeah. That's really sad. <laughs> well, let's start the show regardless. So here is a quote from National Geographic. Abundant fossils, teeth, bones, trackways, and other hard evidence have revealed that Earth was the domain of the dinosaurs for at least 230 million years. But so far, not a single trace of dinosaur remains has been found in rocks younger than about 66 million years. So... What happened to the dinosaurs? No? Too deep. We can't get that far. No, we can't. We... <laughs> no, <laughs> economic no. collapse. Economic collapse. Oh. I mean, if their economy was... Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Their economy was plants, and what? lots yeah, of the plants yeah. died. I was going to say, yeah, if their economy is the food web, then yeah, that thing collapsed real bad. So... Let's talk a little bit more about the dinosaurs. So obviously the age of the dinosaurs ended, as we mostly know, by a asteroid impact. We Mm. we, we, can we all agree on that? Big rock. Big rock hit the earth. Now this was kind of contested for a good while. I think it's still maybe a little bit contested, but as far as I'm aware, I I'd feel confident saying that we the the consensus is that we we were hit by an asteroid and that's what killed the dinosaurs among other things obviously we'll get into the specifics in a little bit so we know that a massive asteroid slammed into uh the yucatan peninsula in mexico were you aware of that yeah there's a big crater it is a big crater but it's hidden underwater is it not or it's no no sorry no it's not hidden underwater it was oh god it was uh next it was near a lot of water there's there's a whole bit at the end, at the end of the yeah. story that makes that like will make that bowl. make sense. So uh, they've taken rocks from the impact site and they've had a look to see what's going on and they found out a lot of they found out a lot of cool information just from looking at some rocks. Yeah. Which you know, you go geologists, you got one win. That's. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, nah, I'm, joking. I'm joking, I'm joking. It's paleontologists that did this. So, not all dinosaurs died that day, but many dinosaurs did, said Sean Gallick, who is a research professor at the University of Texas, Texas Institute for Geophysics. So, I want to talk to you a little bit about a dinosaur named Tannis. Have you heard of Tannis before? No. I love playing Tannis. <laughs> Three times a week, man. The Tannis Club. (laughs) (laughs) So, Tannis is the name of a fossil site where they found a number of very interesting things. So, Mm. it's in North Dakota, which is where? America. America. Very good. Yes, it's one of the United States of America. It is. But what's really cool about this... Well, take a guess. What do you think is really interesting about the fossils at this site? I'm guessing they maybe went some way to lending proof to the theory of, of the of the asteroid impact. Oh, boy. Uh, we believe that these, that these fossils were actually killed on the day of the impact. Ooh. There is... There is fairly decent evidence, it seems. I mean, obviously, I am not a scientist. I'm going based off of the BBC article. To be perfectly uh-huh. honest, that's what I read to get the information on this, along with a couple other places. 
I heard about it. I heard about it a little while ago, and I thought, "Wow, this would be a good episode." So that's that's where this has come from. So supposedly these remains are very well preserved, but also date back to the day that the asteroid struck. Now I'll tell you why that is in a second. But what's really cool to me is that there is a dinosaur leg, a fossilized <laughs> dinosaur leg, which apparently is in such good condition that it has uh, sort of skin on it what so yeah so uh, as far as i'm as far as i'm aware it seems to be that there is <laughs> that there is just this really really well preserved dinosaur uh leg so it's a complete it's a complete limb with skin essentially um fossilized would that make it oh right okay no no so it's not, not like a, a living yeah so it's a fossil it's a fossil it's fossil so it's fossil, not fossil. there's not skin left now it's fossilized skin yeah. is the point okay yeah, right. yeah so but that's something that is i mean this is i mean i can show you an image of it it mm. is utterly incredible <gasps> oh my goodness wow so it it's... looks like those things that um vesuvius when there's like people made of ash yeah. well that would make sense though wouldn't it yeah if an, a massive so. asteroid struck um you could have something similar and also volcanoes going off at the time as well uh is that that's something that was also going on at that time we'll get to that later on in the episode so alongside the egg the egg the leg <laughs> alongside the leg there were fish and a number of other things as well now what's really interesting about the fish is that you can see that the fish apparently breathed in the debris as it as it you know <laughs> from the asteroid as it as it came down because mm. obviously if it hit in mexico now think about the size of this asteroid yeah. it hit in mexico there is debris in North Dakota. Yeah. Not yeah. too far from Mexico, but America is a lot bigger than you, it's still than, a long than way. you think. You know, yeah. you could fit a lot of Europe in Texas. Yeah. So and it's also not the axis of spin, so it's not like the the earth then span towards the mm -hmm. cloud. It mm -hmm. went north to south or south yeah. to north. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So it's like if you look at Mexico and and, and and North Dakota, that is a good distance away. It's incredible how far that traveled. And yeah, it wasn't necessarily aided all that much in the northerly direction. <laughs> yeah, the spin it's just insane so what they've done is they've looked into this and they've managed to figure out uh sort of a play-by-play -play of what could have happened mm -hmm. on the day based on all of these fossils which i just think is so cool because you think of fossils as being fairly dead information right you look at a fossil and you make a bunch of guesses i mean i don't know if this is so there are probably kids listening to this. I say kids. There are probably like young teenagers listening to this and maybe preteens listening to this. I don't know. I don't know how, how old the, some of the youngest people listening to this are. <laughs> but let's assume there are people listening to this who for their entire lives have had feathered dinosaurs as the norm, right? Oh, has that, has that, so that's actually really? transitioned into like the way dinosaurs are represented in like popular culture not so much the way dinosaurs are represented in popular culture more the fact that you would have been taught in school that dinosaurs had feathers and we wow. know this whereas oh, wow. you remember in school we were oh, taught yeah. i didn't know they were teaching that now yeah i mean they, they i mean as in they can't they cannot be teaching that dinosaurs don't have feathers yeah do you know what i mean as in that if you're teaching kids about dinosaurs when well, they you, teach they teach kids all sorts of weird stuff in some parts <laughs> of the world yeah <laughs> but my, my point is my point is that back when it, back when we were in school we yeah. had the whole oh pluto was a planet and then oh pluto was not a planet and mm. then oh, maybe it is a planet who, who knows okay. whatever and I with dinosaurs time. <laughs> with dinosaurs we went from look at these big scaly lizards to yeah. Oh yeah, dinosaurs are birds and probably had feathers, yeah. but we can't really tell. And then they're like, no, no, the dinos no, dinosaurs had feathers. Yeah, they had feathers. A bunch of them had feathers. That's just their whole. That's their deal. You know, yeah. they turned into birds. So, so of pretty. course, yeah. And it's really like it's so cool to look at a. Have you seen a T Rex done up with all the feathers? I've not. No. It doesn't <laughs> look like what you imagine a T Rex to look like, or even so a, like even a, a Velociraptor. <laughs> Velociraptors look like birds. Really? When you put when you cover them in feathers. I was saying this to someone the other day. And I think they made fun of me for it, but I, I stand by it. If you cover a dinosaur in feathers, it's incredible how bird-like it looks. Yeah. And the person I was talking to said, yeah, well, you cover anything in feathers and it looks like a bird. No. 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 You cover a dinosaur, if you, a, a, yeah. a, a sort of a theropod, di a theropod dinosaur. So a theropod dinosaur is uh, the sort of um, raptor dinosaurs so the ones that the ones that look like a velociraptor you know the ones right. that kind of look like they're leaning oh, yeah. forward yeah. like a t-rex like two a t legs like chickeny okay yeah like so, the chickeny looking yeah. ones yeah, yeah. But, i mean i'm not entirely sure if yeah i'm pretty sure t-rex are theropods uh let me just double check that so i can make sure um yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so uh t-rex theropods i think uh, also your, your velociraptor yeah because you think lot. of a chicken naked it's just a little a little butch t-rex yeah 
Yeah, man, <laughs> yeah. it's wild. Obviously, there's a difference in there, uh, and you could probably figure this one out. Birds tend to have a much larger breastbone yeah. for obvious reasons, mm. right? They need to have big breasts so that they can flap their wings and fly. Um, so That'd be tasty. <laughs> yeah, that do. That <laughs> That's do. the reason. That's why. So it's a, a T-Rex is a gigantic chicken with big boobs. Kind of. There's also this. I want to actually touch on this as well because I've, I've, I've. Um, no, no, no. The T Rex doesn't have big boobs. Sorry, with big, small boobs. Kind sorry, the chicken chested. has big boobs. Yeah, the chicken has big boobs. Big yeah. boob muscle, but yeah, big it's boobs. T Rex flat chest. Big pecs. Yeah. Big pecs. Yeah. Yeah. Muscly. So actually, yeah. chickens are much more muscly than T T Rexes. <laughs> proportionally. Uh, proportionally sure. to their size. Oh, but they got chicken legs though, don't they? Scrawny little oh, chicken scrawny legs. Scrawny little chicken legs. Yeah. yeah. You can look at the T Rex's meaty <laughs> leg. That's like one of those turkey drummers you got in school. Yeah. yeah. Oh. So I actually want to touch on something that I've seen on TikTok, and it's one of those usual things. So if you listen to the bonus episodes over on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash side guys, you'll actually find out that we 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 talk about TikToks that I find quite often that yeah. wind me up because they're just dead wrong. <laughs> now, TikTok seems to have uh, glommed onto this idea that the T-Rex, the fossil, like the 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 sort of skeleton for the T-Rex that we've that we put together, we put the arms on backwards. Because if you look at a T-Rex arms when they're on backwards, it looks a lot like an ostrich. Hmm. And that's it. So T Rexes were just big ostr. No, no, you're no, abs dead wrong. N right. Not a single paleontologist has said <laughs> anything remotely similar to this. You've just looked at some bones that look a little bit similar to yeah. your untrained eye and said that's how they should be. It's absolutely not the case. The structure of the bones are different. The way that birds. I mean, I, we can't even do an episode on this, but I really wish we could. I implore everyone to look into bird bones. Or just bones in evolution in general, because those are fascinating to me. So you've obviously got, um, you know, you've got your, you've got the bones of your arm, which then turn into sort of wrist bones, and then you've got your hand bones, and then your finger bones. Oh yeah, yeah. and the finger bones are the are the wings in birds. every sing pretty much oh. every single animal that is um, that is sort of re remotely closely related has the same arm plan that we do. Like, I yeah. mean, you look at horses, <laughs> you look at birds. So basically all mammals and birds have that. Reptiles tend to, they can go a bit different, but birds and mammals have this the same arm plan. They have the same bloody bones that they've evolved from, more or less. And, like, it's so cool to see. But is that right? What, what I've heard, like, in the wing of, like, a chicken, say, what we consider to be our fingers are like super long and they make up the entire wing like they make up the structure of the wing and then the what we consider our forearm and and like arm are like super short yeah so oh god okay i'm i'm just looking at a diagram here and we could chuck this diagram up so essentially what we're looking at here is you you've obviously got your humerus which is your uh big long the sort of long arm bone mm. you know your your yeah. not your forearm your upper arm upper arm uh, and then the, your forearm bones uh, are your radius and ulna which i hate because they cross over and that's disgusting yeah. and, it shouldn't, and it's Eww. wrong Eww, yeah, yeah. oh yeah so yes you, you got two bones in your forearm oh, you just ruined arms for me I, I as soon as I, <laughs> I i genuinely found that out when i was 24 and i hated it oh. i've I hated it oh, from the minute that someone any... oh. because I, I, it, it it is incredibly irritating they shouldn't be crossing over Ooh. they should say they should Ugh. stay straight oh 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 i'm so <laughs> anyway, aware of this now so you've got yeah. your radius and your ulna and then you've got your carpals which is the sort of the wristy handy bones um and then you've got your metacarpals which are these sort of uh these other bones sort of in your hands um and then you've got your phalanges which are your finger bones as mm. far as i'm aware this might be a little bit off but i'm pretty sure that's how it works um yeah you've got your carpals metacarpals phalanges so wristy bones handy bones Fingy bones. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, now, with the bird... Now, uh, well, let's talk about bats, because this diagram has bats on it as well, and that's a really interesting way to, to consider it. So bats, obviously, convergent evolution, they also evolved wings in the same way. Not in the same way that birds did. In a similar way to how birds evolved wings. But separately obviously, to birds. Separately to birds. Yeah. Right. But uh, also, they, 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 they clearly had um, had to adapt what like a mammalian hand, essentially, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So what what uh what bats do is they this is a bat wing is like this, right? What are you so doing? This for is, audio listeners. I'll, 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 I'll okay. explain. Um, a bat wing is like is like this. So you've got your arm sort of bent and your fingers splayed out, and the wings of the bat Ew. are just fingers with a whole bunch of skin webbing in between. Yeah, yeah like a very yeah. webbed fingers. Um, and then the the pinky finger, the skin of the pinky finger, then attaches to sort of the foot. <laughs> 
and you know what I mean, and yeah. and and that's how you get a bat wing. Oh, sure. Um, and they've got the little thumb. Oh, at the, wow. You've got a little thumb at the top of the bat wing, which is like the little sort of claw, the grabby claw. But their fingers are just the wings, which is incredible to me. Whereas birds are kind of different. So they've got the radius. They've got you know you've obviously they've obviously got the humerus and then the radius and the ulna. Yeah. And then they've got the carpal, so the sort of wristy bones. And then the metacarpal, so the sort of hand bones, are quite elongated, right? And then they've only got, I think, uh, three phalanges, it looks like. So three fingers. So it's easier to lose features than it is to gain them. Yeah. You know, for example, whales can lose their back legs, um, and I think still have the bones for them somewhere buried in their body. Um, yeah. Yeah, and lose their fingers, despite the fact that the bones for them are still buried in their bloody fins. Stupid. Um <laughs> It's so stupid. I love it so much. <laughs> Evolution is dumb and I if love it. you wanted evidence that intelligent design probably wasn't wasn't the case. Just look at all the stupid things evolution has done. Man. There's literally a nerve that goes like down from your head, down to like the middle of your stomach, and then back up to your voice box or something like sure. that. Intelligent design is if uh, that would be, I honestly think, if like a toddler were to yeah. design things. Like, okay. It's more complex than a toddler could design. But if God was a toddler, that would be intelligent design. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, you're like, oh, well, I've put this down. Oh, a toddler with down. no undo button. Yeah, no yeah. undo yeah. button. That's it. It's drawing in pen. <laughs> you're like, oh, man, wouldn't it be cool if I drew this? Oh, I gave oh. it legs. But it, legs are bad for where it lives. I guess I'll just kind of cover the legs Join the legs body. Up. <laughs> um, uh, okay, sure. So birds... Um, so with birds, obviously, uh, they, their arms are their arms are pretty similar up until the sort of wrist bones, um, and then you've got the, the sort of wristy handy bones that are kind of similar wrist to ours, and then it's the the metacarpals. So that would be, I think, in our in our hands. Do you know when you how you can kind of feel um, the bones yeah. in your hand, like your fingers, yeah. bones, yeah. like yeah. your so fingers much. extend right down. Yeah, it feels kind of to your wrist, <laughs> which again, freaky, weird. It feels like if you were to split. Your fingers down you could just have super extra long fingers yes. <laughs> yeah yeah so that part of birds is what's modified right that part of birds is there's um they've got two carpals uh, metacarpals it looks like which are sort of um which are sort of like uh elongated and kind of coming together kind of like the radius and ulna um and then they've got three uh phalanges which are sort of one is jutting off the top kind of like how the bat um Phalange uh, uh, juts off the top. No, yes, the bat yeah. finger juts off the top, and then they've got kind of two other uh, fingers in <laughs> still inside the wing that are just kind of like that are just kind of like this in a sort of like peace sign shape, <laughs> pointing downwards. Um, and and so bird wings, the way that they're depicted in media are basically not how bird wings actually <laughs> look. I mean, when you look right. at a bird wing when it's like plucked, it just looks like two pointy sort of like it looks like two sort of pointy stabby things. Yeah, which. I've seen on some dinosaurs. Looks very cool, um, and it, you can you can kind of understand how something like a T Rex or a Velociraptor could have uh, evolved into something more like a chicken, or or something along that line, or along those lines, say, or something like an ostrich, or or anything else. You know, you could see how the the sort of progression there. They just kind of lose bones, extend some of them, move to different mm. places. It's it's really, really bloody interesting. Uh, so that's that's kind of how that's kind of the connection between dinosaurs and birds because birds literally are just they're just dinosaurs. So this this fossil site they found, as I said, they found that leg, some fish, but they've also found a turtle. And I'll just read this out directly from the BBC website. Actually, uh, it says we see a fossil turtle that was skewered at a wo by a wooden stake. The remains of small mammals and the burrows they made, skin from a horned tri triceratops the embryo of a flying pterosaur inside its egg and Whoa. what appears to be a fragment of the from the asteroid impactor itself and it it's just it's so bloody cool so the the leads um the graduate student who's leading the the dig at this site, Robert De Palma, has said he's from the University of Manchester in the UK. He said we've got so many details with this site that tell us what happened the mo uh, what happened moment by moment. It's almost like watching it play out in the movies. You look at the rock column, you look at the fossils there, and it brings you back to that day. This is what's incredible incredible to me about archaeology is that, it, as I said, it seems like this dead thing. But you look at fossils, you could look at the fossil records, and you could look at you could track how species have evolved over time, mm. or you could look at you could look at fossils, you could date them. You could see what elements are present um, in certain areas. I mean, and we'll get to that in a bit. You could look at what elements are present in certain areas and build up a picture of what's happened. The way that we can reconstruct events is incredible to me. It's mm -hmm. just 
absolutely baffling. And I suppose another thing that might lend, I assume, would lend credibility to the idea of a massive impact is if you find elements in one area that don't belong there and, and aren't normally there in the mm-hmm. in the record. Hold on to that thought. Okay, cool. So that is that is sort of this um, this North Dakota site. It's about uh, I think three thousand kilometers away from the impact site. Wow. Which is, I mean. You can see where the rotation of the Earth, I think, would have contributed to some of that, but that is that a lot of that is northerly direction. You know, yeah. a lot of it is yeah. northerly direction, and it's it's just baffling, absolutely baffling. So there are sort of as, as it says here, the sturgeon and paddlefish in this fossil tangle are key. They have small particles stuck in their gills. These are the spherules of molten rock kicked out from the impact that then fell back across the planet. The fish would have breathed in the particles as they entered the river. So they've um, they've they've basically used sort of um, radiometric dating and chemical analysis to figure out uh, that the um, that the sort of um, particles that they've recovered are not from earth essentially there's there's an extraterrestrial origin so boom an asteroid must have hit or something must have come down to earth to um to mean it like otherwise we wouldn't have found these chemicals in those places in trees and in uh in and in sort of like in fish and whatnot it's so it's so so interesting so they've 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 looked into all of this is like just this is chemistry this is geology geography mm-hmm. um, paleontology all of these sort of different disciplines coming together to help us build this picture of what it actually looks like so the BBC is actually making a TV show um, I think they've been on they've been at it since maybe gosh 2019 um, I think that was or 2019 was roughly when this the stuff from this dig site started coming out uh, to the public. So about three or so, about three years ago, and the BBC have been working on a TV show. I think with David Attenborough. This is, is that the is that yes. the one that's is that the one that's out? So this is the one that like starts off as an animation. It starts mm-hmm. off as like an animation with a bunch of T Rexes, and then it tra- travels over to a dig site. And the dig site is so secret that they're not allowed to say where it is. Oh, amazing. Uh, yeah, so they've been filming there for years, the BBC, which is really quite fantastic. They've brought in people from, they've brought in a lot of experts to uh, get information on this, which is really interesting because usually, obviously, these kind of breakthroughs would be published in papers and the BBC <laughs> is kind yeah. of, you know, giving oh, it to the people, wow. which I on think is really front. interesting. Yeah. Dingling ling is that the ad bell? It Hark. sure is. It's the ad bell. Well, the ad gods have asked us to promote our Patreon on this episode. Hell yes! Thanks to our patrons over at patreon.com forward slash SciGuys. You get SciGuys every single week, but if you become a patron, you can get a whole host of other things. What can they get if they join our Patreon? An extra episode a month. You can get access to our super secret Patreon podcast After Dark. Just because SciGuys has ended doesn't mean the conversation has. That's right, and you can also vote on episode topics, submit episode topics for the vote, and some patrons can just Get rid of democracy altogether and tell us exactly what episode they want us to make. You get bonus clips, behind the scenes stuff, lots of cool stuff over on our Patreon. You should definitely go and check it out right now. Patreon.com forward slash side guys. Don't miss it. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start the show again. <laughs> So essentially, they've got, I mean, they've got so many cool things. Um, So I'm just going to read out some quotes from uh, Paul Barrett, who is a sort of expert in plant eating dinosaurs. Ornith, oh my goodness me, Ornithischian. Um, He's an expert in Ornithischian dinosaurs. That means vegan dinosaurs. He says, it's a Thezkelosaurus. Why am I reading these out for the first time now? (laughs) It's from a group that we didn't have any previous record of what its skin looked like. So weird. And it shows very conclusively that these animals were very scaly like lizards. They weren't feathered like their meat-eating contemporaries. This looks like an animal whose leg had simply been ripped off really quickly. There's no evidence of leg uh, on the leg of disease. There are no obvious pathologies. There's no trace of the leg being scattered such as bite marks or bits of it that are missing so the best idea that we have is that this is an animal that died more or less instantaneously bloody interesting on that yes. you said earlier that there was a turtle that was impaled by a stake of wood yes how on earth did that happen in prehistoric times i don't know i mean you were wood about there's turtles about a dinosaur could stab <laughs> yeah, but a turtle. neither of those things are moving very fast yeah but an explosion <laughs> Oh, oh, like wood falling from the sky or flying or fly- across. Yeah, yeah. One would assume. Oh, yeah. What a way to die. I think, yeah, I feel like that's that like got to be one of the nice. first animals to be like impaled on something. Because no. like we didn't have like people weren't around making spears yet. I feel like it's quite easy for animals to be impaled. I mean, mm, depends on 
Yeah, what would you get impaled on? Other than like a falling tree? I would say other animals. Mm. Well, other animals with their things. Yeah. yeah, maybe. Yeah. Are there many animals with spiky oh, rhino horns? Yeah, okay, fine. Triceratops. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've got okay. three of them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well. Wow, triple threat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is just, uh, this is really interesting. There are obviously some scientists that are skeptic, more skeptical about this. Um, I don't want to make it out as though this is 100% Set in stone. <laughs> Set in stone. Um, <laughs> I, don't want, <laughs> I don't want to make out as though this is absolutely set in stone, uh, but there there is quite good evidence and some scientists are quite excited about this. I just want to share this with you. So take it with a grain of salt. Mm. I'm not an expert. You shouldn't be trusting me for, um, you know, being absolutely 100% correct on the things that scientists, you know, I can't make the decision on whether it's correct or not. Listen to scientists. I'm just telling you what I've read from them. So... As I've said, there are some people who are maybe less than convinced about it. So, it, it like for example, uh, this is this is from Professor Steve Brusati from the University of Edinburgh. He has uh, he has said that it's possible. For example, this is just from the BBC that animals that had died before the impact were exhumed by the violence on the day and then reinterred in a way that made their deaths appear concurrent. So, what he's saying is these animals died. And just the impact on the day could have brought them out again uh, from where they were sort of being entombed, mm. and given like and and it, it basically put all of this sort of space junk in them, and then sort of re-entombed them so that it appears that it all happened at once, which isn't right. it, it terribly uh, sort of improbable, you know. So understandably, not everyone is absolutely convinced on this. I'm not saying that you absolutely should be convinced on this, but it is. It is quite interesting. So I'll, I'll tell you a little bit of something else. So uh, they also had the pterosaur egg, the sort of pterosaur embryo in the egg. So what they've done is they've used x-rays to figure out what the sort of chemistry and the properties of the eggshell would be. Um, I think uh, probably, it, it doesn't matter specifically the sort of process that you used. They said it was likely leathery rather than hard, which may indicate that the pterosaur mother buried the egg in sand or sediment like a turtle, which is really bloody cool. Um, so... It's it, 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 that is kind of the the tannistic side, and I want to move on to more about sort of what actually happened. So, do you know who it was that sort of proposed that an asteroid was the cause of the death of the dinosaurs? I do not. Oh, I don't know. So, it's the Alvarez hypothesis. So, in 1980, uh, there is uh, there was a, a Nobel Prize winning physicist, Louis Walter Alvarez, and he had a son who was a geologist, Walter Alvarez. They published their theory of sort of a large asteroid hitting the Earth and that being the cause for the dinosaurs dying. Now, Luke, you pointed out something that would be quite key evidence in showing that an asteroid may have hit. Well, if stuff had moved around the Earth mm -hmm. um, and been deposited on the ground in sort of the geological record... Um, that doesn't appear naturally in other other like if there's a mm -hmm. certain type of rock in one area and it turns up a thousand miles away um that's pretty good evidence that unless something's probably not moved it a thousand miles mm -hmm. so it's been thrown a thousand miles so the key thing here the key metal we're looking at here is iridium and iridium mm -hmm. which if you've seen the avengers it's a very good stabilizing agent if you want to open a space portal. Is it actually? Or, <laughs> no. No. Oh, Does it, no. I mean, sorry. I mean, I if was, the space I started so like, saying that sentence before you finished your sentence. <laughs> yeah. Like, is this a real thing about iridium? Or no? Oh, wait, no, space portals. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see. More research we'll is needed. Hey, as soon as we get our hands on that bloody space stone, we'll we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, iridium is rare in, in Earth's crust. But... There is just a ton of iridium, relatively speaking, where the impact site is. So, That's as I said, very convenient. the impact site was um, off the off the coast of Mexico, and it actually is underwater. I've just double checked again. It is it is underwater. Uh, the impact site now, present day, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's just it it's it, there's a big crater underwater, which is I guess one of the reasons that we didn't necessarily find it immediately. So there is not there... being aquatic animals. Yes, yeah, sure. Yeah, well, I mean. Not going to be diving down the Gulf of. Me We're usually just spilling oil over there, aren't we? That's our thing. Spill <laughs> Which oil. Which make it even harder to see the bottom. Exactly. But it's giving the dinosaurs their revenge, isn't it? Putting the dinosaurs back in in the impact site. <laughs> <laughs> no. Look, okay. Someone's going to say in the comments that oil, di is that not oil isn't dinosaurs. dinosaurs. It's more likely plants and blah blah blah. I know. It'll be a I tiny know. bit dinosaurs. There's, maybe there is a chance that there is at least one single tiny bit of dinosaur in there. Just That's like there's a. 
bit of water that went through Hitler in every glass of water. I don't think mm. that's that's true. In every glass of in water, every glass of water, there'll be a little tiny, a le- one particle of that water will have gone through Hitler. That statistically, I that, that seems unlikely. Well, please, more, more research is needed. No, I understand the I understand the concept that's yeah. being proposed. How much water was he drinking? A normal amount of water, one would assume. But I, I would say it's quite heated, mm-hmm. so maybe a bit more than average. My my mm-hmm. point is that I I understand the concept that 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 you know water is it's constant essentially that yeah. it's just recycled over and over and over. I, it still is hard for me to think that a man who spent most of his time in Austria and then Germany would have like that the, the water would have traveled so far across the world that everyone in every glass is drinking a little bit of that. That seems unlikely. Wow. So as I was saying, iridium is the is the main sort of thing we're looking at here. It's rare in Earth's crust, but it there's lots of it in meteorites. And a big rock fell from the sky. <laughs> okay? <laughs> a big hunk of just stuff fell from yeah. the sky, made a big old crater, left a bunch of its iridium sitting about, and we thought, hey, there must be, there must have been an asteroid that killed off these dinos. <laughs> so it's actually really, just really interesting, as I said. Um, so I'm going to be, I might be mentioning uh, the KPG boundary, which is the uh, cretaceous Paleogene um, uh, boundary. Oh, we know. Yeah? No, I was, Cretaceous I'm is well spelled aware. with a C, by the way. I I, I don't know why. Uh, <sighs> I don't know why it's it wrong KPG. my whole life. <laughs> so the Cretaceous, you know, you've said, you've written the word Cretaceous before, I'm sure. I don't think I've written it. Okay. <laughs> He said it then. <laughs> Maybe he said it. So the Cretaceous Paleogene. Um, so that's just it's just sort of the time period. Um, I believe. Yeah, the sort of uh, or it's it it's it's the layer. Goodness me, it's the layer of the Earth. I believe that in that sort of indicates that time period. Yes. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. Like the layer of the yes. cake from that time. Shh. And you're adding more layers on top of the cake. Yes. Thank yeah. you. With every. <laughs> and then yeah. the lower the layer, the longer the time. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yes. And the bottom yeah. of the cake turns to oil. What? <laughs> the bottom yes, of the, the cake bottom of the cake does maybe turn to oil. I don't yeah. know how that works, actually, so no. maybe not. And you get a straw and you suck it up. And you like suck it up. Through, we through can discuss. And then you destroy the thing that hosts your life. We can discuss the formation of natural gas and oil and coal another day. Fantastic. Pressure, time, and, <laughs> uh, and organic material, yeah. basically. Deary me. So <laughs> they found, as I said, they found a bunch of fossils in that sort of in that sort of layer of the earth, right? The KPG boundary. And that's the sort of Tannis, that's the Tannis site that we're talking about. That's where they were, that's where they were digging. So they've, they found so much, so, like so much stuff, like in, in those layers, so many fossils, loads of tiny bits of glass called tectites or tectites, tectites, I'll say, uh, which are a little, uh, apparently little blobs of melted, melted rock kicked up by the impact that solidified in the atmosphere and then rained down over earth. I found Ooh. this, I find this fascinating. I was literally doing some research about this, um, on a story I'm doing about, um, the moon, mm-hmm. um, and about how like the heat of impacts creates glass. Yeah. And you mm. never think about that because you, you never think about the fact that sa- the glass. Obviously, you know that glass is just like sand, it's hot sand, hot yeah. sand. But it doesn't feel like it is because because no. glass is so perfect and clear, and sand is not. You can't clear. see through. I don't through sand. No. Yeah. and then there's volcanic glass, which is just sharp and hard and ouchy <laughs> and black usually as well. That stuff is scary, right? I've not come across any, but You've I'm sure seen... if I did, I would be quaking. Oh no, volcanic oh. glass is cool, but also it's like if you sort of shatter that thing it's sharp and hard and it hurts it's 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 something that i find very cool but i'm also very cautious of but (laughs) glass in general it just feels like it shouldn't come from sand nah it feels like it shouldn't exist without people right it just shouldn't it shouldn't it does it mm, but it shouldn't it shouldn't and also (laughs) again it comes from sand no sand is is, sand is essentially a powder of hard yeah not see-through stuff yeah yeah glass is a pain a see-through stuff? A yeah. solid pane of see-through. Yeah, Don't... glass feels like the kind of stuff you'd make in Minecraft when you, like, do some crafting. And mm. it doesn't feel like the Earth should be able to do crafting without you there. Obviously, the glass that we're talking about isn't tiny little just bits of glass, glass that yeah, we, no. we'd normally think of. It's a bit different. But still, you just take rocks and make them see-through, and then you you put it on your... Ha- Weird. We- it's- our houses are made of rocks. Yes. Just... if. Yeah. if- like a lot, just mostly rocks. They're very well built rocks, but yes, they're <laughs> mainly rocks. Like we've got good at using rocks, but it's still rocks. That is so 
ridiculous. We're just living a big old game of Minecraft, yeah. and we're pretending that we're not. We can put electricity through the rock. Yeah, you can figure that away. That's very true. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, you take well. What we could also do is take rocks and then take parts out of the rocks mm. and then make wires with the parts we've taken out of the rock. And then you pass, then you <laughs> pass a current through those wires and then encase them in more rock, and then you got a bulb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So stupid. <laughs> so, moving back, let's do a little sort of play-by-play -play of, of what happened. Maybe not exactly a play-by-play, -play. I don't have that much detail, but just to give you an idea of what happened. So, you know, so 425 feet of material started to accumulate where the asteroid hit, um, and apparently it's been estimated up to 10 billion World War II era atomic bombs is oh, the power oh of that of that strike that'd do it which makes mm. sense i mean when you start hearing about the stuff that happened it's honestly unbelievable so the the asteroid came down bear in mind this asteroid was huge and what happened was a lot of water then just rushed into this crater that was made um you know we, we gotta we gotta remember that <laughs> the 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 asteroid hits there is an incredible amount of power you know like nuclear bomb levels mm. um multiple nuclear bomb levels so you know it, it, it hits and vaporizes just so much like things are just vaporized mm. and a, there's a massive crater obviously and it's next to a bunch of water so all of this stuff that has been shoved out of the way mm. and you know and burnt up has been has been shoved into sort of the water and the water sort of rushes then back in to fill the sort of crater which sounds maybe okay that's a tsunami, my friend. Oh, no. Oh. Very bad. It's very bad. I hope there weren't mm. anything living in that water. Mm. Oh, it's not. I wouldn't say not necessarily quite a tsunami, but that's the that's oh, yeah. the vibe you got to think about. I mean, yeah. actually, probably yeah. I, I feel comfortable describing that as a tsunami, I would say. Like that water is not coming back in slowly. OK, yeah. that's rush. That that yeah. stuff is rushing back in. So, you know, uh, it, the, the, the water has come rushing back in. Uh, there is uh, charcoal in the deposits that they found, which indicates that trees and other plants were just lit on fire. But, luckily, they God. didn't burn for very long. Oh. They disintegrated or something. No, luckily. no, the tsunami came. Ah, oh, put, put them out. Oh, fire man the Sam. You don't have to worry about, a you don't have to worry about <laughs> burning if there was a tsunami. If you're oh. on fire, a tsunami is coming, you're all good. Life finds a way. <laughs> Bear in mind, this is oh, this will be a while away from the actual like direct impact site, because if you're on the direct, direct impact site, Vaporized, I'm gone, pretty yeah. sure. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> burning in the tsunami would be the least of your worries. So the tsunami wave comes and it hits. It pulls all of the all of the burnt up trees and whatnot that have been blasted outward back into the crater. So apparently these, so some some researchers have said this that the fires that that were started could have gone thousands of miles uh, across. And the the tsunami waves. Bear in mind the impact the impact site was around. Mexico. Yeah. Illinois is apparently where the tsunami waves could have reached. Illinois. It's quite high up in the US, isn't Chicago it? is in Illinois. Oh my god, it's at the top of the US. It's at the top of the US. <laughs> These are big tsunami waves. This is this is what some scientists have said. Oh, we don't know, yeah. of course. Okay. Uh then apparently what's also really interesting as well is that if you escaped the initial blast, so I really like when we're we we've compared this to nuclear bombs and it's interesting to me because feels very similar mm. in the way that the impact sort of in in the way that the sort of deaths occurred yeah like, in that yeah. you think of you think of a bomb dropping and you're like oh bomb drops and then uh, and then if you d didn't die when the bomb Kaboom. dropped you're fine yeah <laughs> blast no. wave you got you got the bomb dropping the blast wave if you're not vaporized then with the nuclear dust one there's cloud. fallout and then there's the dust cloud which blocks up there's but so many the problems. Sun, then you starve. Luckily, in this <sighs> case, there wasn't. It wasn't a nuclear, a nuclear sort of explosion. It wasn't a nuclear uh, yeah. impact. So that's useful uh, for these, I guess, extinct dinosaurs. But everything else is similar. It's just no. There's no nuclear stuff. But everything else is. It's a vast amount of energy released in a small space. Mm. Quickly. Yeah. Yeah. It's, so yeah. The, 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 the basically the only difference between this. And what we would see from most nuclear sort of, I say the only difference, the main difference from this and what we'd see from most sort of nuclear uh, bombs is that there is not any fallout, which yeah. is, which essentially means that if you manage to survive the initial impact and then all of the horrible environmental effects that happen afterwards, yeah. 
you're not going to die of radiation sickness so Great. it's generally fine fantastic but Good. when we talk about when we talk about uh, the reason i'm bringing up um atom bombs essentially here is because it is so similar in it that's the closest thing that i think we can think of in terms of power to this yeah you know yeah. it's the closest that we can that we can get to actually con- considering it out of interest you mentioned earlier you said um this is about 10 world war Two era atom bombs it says uh, 10 billion World War II oh. atom bombs. <laughs> okay, and there's the billion. Yeah, 10 billion. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I was going to ask what, what's a, a modern day, but it would still be billions times more. So it doesn't really compare. Wow, we're really puny. The tiniest thing, we, the, mi- the most powerful thing we've ever made mm. is like a tiny little little speck compared to this. This yeah. is why Ultron's plan from Age of Ultron was actually <laughs> genius. I'm not, jo- like, j- I'm not joking. You take a city... And you drop it from orbit on you the pick earth. pick it up and you drop it. You are killing so many people. Yeah. Like, you, you don't need nukes to do that. You just drop a city. You just uh, lift an entire city up. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> but, like, he's a ro- he's a bloody, he's an AI robot man made of oh, yeah. indestructible metal. I think... My mistake. Yeah, whose indestructible robot son turned against him. I think it's perfectly fine that he lifts a city up and drops it. Okay. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. My Especially apologies. He's fighting against the bloody god of thunder, and he got you're, an issue with him lifting up right. a city. You're right. So, as I was saying, the tsunami waves could have reached as far as Illinois, and the rock samples uh, told them something pretty interesting, which was that apparently, if you were a dinosaur and you survived that initial blast, lucky you, uh, there was a bunch of sulfur that was just vaporized. (laughs) So, around the crater, there are a lot of rocks that have got a lot of sulfur in. Lots of rocks with lots of sulfur. In the crater, not, not much sulfur at all. What's going on there? Sulfur vaporized, went up into the atmosphere, blocked oh. the sun. Oh. Yeah, yeah. That's not nice. <laughs> so the sulfur w- would have been vaporized, gone to the atmosphere, as I said, and that gas in the atmosphere would have just sort of, would have had a basically the opposite of a greenhouse effect. It would have just reflected the sunlight back mm. into space, which meant that just immediately there was this global cooling effect. Do you remember when that bloody oh, what's it called that icelandic volcano went off it's icelandic i believe the one yeah. that's impossible impossible to pronounce yeah. it went off and we weren't able to fly planes for ages there was suit all like spreading across the world things were like cooling a little bit yeah remember that yeah imagine that but just everywhere for a very long time for a long time long time and also you don't know what's going on because you're a little dinosaur a dinosaur or a little mammal <laughs> or a little fishy a little shrew. Yeah. and you're just like He's what's going a bad on day. You, bro, you come out your yeah. burrow and oh. you're like Oh no. Oh no. Oh, well, no. actually, if you're a mammal, you're like, ha ha, I'm glad I evolved me some fur because <laughs> I don't need to worry too much about the changes in temperature. I'm glad that yeah, my true. survival is not dependent on the temperature that my eggs are kept at because um, <laughs> I keep my eggs inside me. <laughs> no, so. <laughs> and I have warm blood. I actually don't mm. know if mammals had evolved. Uh, I don't know if mammals at that point had evolved out of laying eggs. I'm not actually sure. I don't know. It, the timelines, there's so much to know on all of this yeah. that because I don't specialize in that, I just find it interesting. I There are so many blind spots for me yeah. uh, in, in that regard. So I don't know where mammals were at their point of evolution. So, you know, that sort of suit that was in the atmosphere, what do you think that that did beyond just making it colder? Killed all the plants. Why would it have killed all the plants? They w- they want to drink the sun, but they can't get oh, any. That's there's a big sweet. mirror in the sky. Well, lucky lucky for us, right? Okay, we don't eat the sun, so we were fine, right? No, no, we we eat the, the pl- all the other animals were fine. We either eat the plants or we eat the things that eat the plants. Oh, so you're saying that because the plants died, everything else died? I am suggesting Uh-oh. that that was mostly true. Goodness me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So the 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 plants then died out because of the lack. A lot of plants died out because of the lack of sunlight, which meant that that messed up the food web because you've got herbivores that then can't have the plants and they're dying yeah. out. And then you've got your predators who don't have herbivores to eat, and so they're yeah. dying out. And then the larger predators are dying out even worse because they got nothing going on for them. And if you are not, say, a creature that has a very very diet, you're screwed. Yeah, you, you just ha- you cannot uh, you cannot keep up. So it's really like a chain reaction. It's just the ecosystem, the entire ecosystem, just collapsed. Just because the, you, you take out you, you take out that bit of the foundation, the plants, boom, it's just it it, it will it just collapses. Mm. It, there there was nothing that anything could do because plants are really just that foundation of food webs because they take energy from just space. 
yeah and make it so that everything else can use that energy so apparently the, the, we don't know specifics on what exactly the mechanism was that killed a lot of different things and we don't know how long all of this sort of stuff necessarily lasted but we do like i mean we're pretty certain that it was an asteroid that hit right that's uh we were, we're pretty certain or, or we're pretty certain that a rock hit from space yeah you know uh so lots and lots of stuff died out you've got ammonites microscopic microscopic plankton large marine reptiles a bunch of dinosaurs non-avian dinosaurs essentially uh you know crocodiles managed to survive some mammals yeah. managed to survive uh avian dinosaurs managed to survive and uh, you know a few other things are still about today but Dear me, this was a mass, mass extinction event. Mm. So it's interesting because we, let, let, let's let's talk about let's talk about what could have happened. You know, had the uh, had the dinosaurs actually survived. You know, because if you if you think about this, if it wasn't for this mass extinction event, what what would you expect today to look like? Well, presumably some slowly evolving towards m- higher intelligent dinosaurs. Well, actually, no. interesting. Well, I mean, we're kind of got that. Birds are like, crows are fairly intelligent. So yeah, my, yeah, my, but like d- dinosaurs in business suits. N- so what's going what to was work. actually Actual going on? The there was actually some sh- a global a, a, a climate change effect going on already, right? Uh, because obviously there are natural climate changes. No, this one is not a natural climate change. It's caused by human human <laughs> oh, no. interaction with the planet. <laughs> don't <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. Don't you do it. So we're going back to the dinosaur times and talking about this natural climate change. Not the current one, yeah. which isn't natural. We're going back to then and talking about the natural climate change that was happening. So that was already would already have spelled a bit of a bit of an issue for the 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 animals and, and plants living at the time because things were changing already. So climate change can wipe out a lot of life. So mm-hmm. the avian dinosaurs were also were were kind of they were in a good niche essentially they were actually all right and they probably would have survived anyway i'm not saying things would have looked exactly the same as today so coming from an expert here apparently we would have we probably would have seen a lot more sort of non-bird like dinosaurs apparently um if 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 that hadn't happened but we probably would have seen a, the mammals sort of rise regardless and avian mm. dinosaurs continue to to develop in, in in similar ways because there was already a climate change going on. This was just a big big event that caused, I mean, a massive change in the in the in the environment of the Earth, um, which you know obviously just killed off a lot of things all at once. But it did it, it kind of it sped up some things that were going on already. That's not to say it would have been exactly the same. It would have been quite different. But I I don't want to give the impression that the dinosaurs were all doing just hunky dory, huh. and then an asteroid hits, and then suddenly it's not. There were already things going on. So a part of that is that some people some people were were saying sort of that oh it's not a it's not an asteroid it was volcanoes. So the idea is that there were te- there was changes in temperature before the impact happened about sixty six million years ago, and volcanic activity was becoming a. a pretty frequent well, wasn't becoming pretty frequent it is pretty frequent and so that was changing a lot of that was changing a lot of things and that could have caused some extinctions and that is that makes sense but it's more thought of that it could be both right so i think the idea is that the asteroid hits and that was that that had a massive impact and as i said there was already this period of climate change which was heavily sort of spurred on by volcanic activity obviously volcanic activity can change the climate in what ways or what main way we've spoken about it already well ash well, being in the ash sky yeah. ash, ash being in the sky yeah. is 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 a big one that uh, sort of uh, ash being in the sky and spewing just gases into the atmosphere yeah. that change the that change the sort of quality and how much heat it retains so those are sort of long-term changes caused by volcanic activity, and the asteroid would have been that big just smash. I've I've taken out a bunch of stuff, but the volcanoes were doing a lot of work anyway. So, what survived the impact? What survived that mass extinction? Well, al- al- either alligators or crocodiles, or maybe both. Probably both, I believe. Yeah. Um, uh, chickens. No. Or oh, chickens came from something. Like raptors and stuff. Yeah. yeah like theropod. Theropod. Or avian dinosaurs, rather. And a bunch of stuff under the sea. So, yeah. I mean, and small stuff, things, uh, I think. Uh, yeah, smaller things Did were better well. at surviving. Yeah. Because bigger things need more energy, yeah. generally. And so that was harder to find, especially if you had to find it from a bunch of smaller things. And obviously, 
uh, flowering plants were just super dominant after the dinosaur's extinction. I'm not entirely sure why, but flowering plants, as in plants that have flowers, people, this is interesting. People <laughs> think of flowering plants as just, that's just plants. Mm. Nah, 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 nah. Flowering plants just had this massive boom after that. Apparently all land animals weighing over 25 kilograms died. That's all of us really? out. Yeah. Well, yeah, but wow. you know, mammals were pretty solid because they've got fur and they're yeah. sort of uh, they, they can main, they can regulate their body temperature. They're not super dependent on the external temperatures for that. So it's actually really interesting. So uh, here's a quote from uh, from an expert on this. He says, "What we're left with are basically the seeds of what we have today. Many of the major animal groups that are alive today were in place before the asteroid impact, and they all suffered some level of extinction. But the lines that led to modern animals got." through all of the non-bird dinosaurs died out but dinosaurs survived as birds some types of bird did go extinct extinct but the lineages that led to modern birds survived so obviously after this you had just a lot of smaller animals which was really which is really interesting you know just a world of slightly smaller animals and there were very big birds that survived that were i think uh both predatory and herbivorous and they died out pretty quickly just because it's hard to maintain that level of body mass mm. where there's not that much sort of th there's not that sort of food and 15 million years after the sort of non-bird dinosaurs were went extinct it's this is something called the oligocene epoch i think uh, oligocene epoch that's when you start to get the big mammals like rhino sized mammals um sort of starting to appear and before that for 15 million years it was mostly small mammals small sort of bird like creatures or dino avian dinosaurs and it, it you know and obviously some kinds of some kinds of flowering plants and whatnot and some sea creatures you know but you had your mosasaurs die out i think you had your plesiosaurs i think the plesiosaurs died out around about there but you had a lot of sea creatures I, i'm not so sure about the megalodon when that went extinct but Mm, I'm not sure, but you had a lot of sea creatures that just went out as well because you think that the sea is separate from the the sort of land and all of that. But bear in mind that there are there are <laughs> there are plankton in the water that need to get light from the sky. If there's less light from the sky, mm. the plankton in the water can't get that. If there's no plankton in the mm. water, then you can't have the smaller animals that feed on. You can't have the zooplankton that feed on the um the sort of what's the what's the word for it. Oh, I can't remember the word. You can't have the zooplankton that feed on the uh, the uh, the other plankton. So you can't then have the stuff that feed on the zooplankton and the other plankton uh, eating that. And then you can't have the slightly bigger things eating that, which means that you don't have the mosasaurs and whatnot eating their big prey and you're just screwed. What about all of the bugs? Because there are these flowering plants. Presumably there's something pollinating these flowering plants or the flowers wouldn't have stuck I think around. Bugs did okay. I think the m bugs, bugs, are, bugs are ancient. Uh, bugs are quite old. Yeah. yeah, I think the main issue for bugs... Now, I don't know the timing of this, so I may be wrong, but I'm going to draw from what I've heard elsewhere. I think one of the big issues for bugs is oxygen. Bugs yeah. can be basically whatever size if there's a high enough oxygen density, because they're very weird in the way that they're... Uh, and we're talking colloquial bugs here, not um, not, uh, not scientific <laughs> bugs. <laughs> insects, yeah. generally, right? They, they operate uh, in, in that they've got kind of essentially these tubes going into yeah. them rather than sort of breathing through lungs they just have tubes that go into parts of their body and if there's not a high enough oxygen 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 density then the oxygen can't penetrate deep enough yeah right. for them to be big enough for them to be bigger so the higher the oxygen density the, the bigger uh, bugs can be bugs i think generally went fine you know bugs are uh, the bugs are bugs they they're they they're pretty hardy yeah yeah uh, so i think flowering plants i don't know when the i don't know when flowering plants and bugs started to use each other for use each other in the way that they use each other now for pollination and food mm. i'm not sure i mean i'll look into that this is the stuff that i find incredibly interesting but there's so much there's <laughs> yes. so much there sure is i mean i would recommend pbs eons really great for all of this sort of stuff really really good kurt skasag has got a few good things on it as well but um pbs eons is just mad solid for just good little sort of uh tidbits and, and bite-sized pieces about this so that's what survived i guess guess but why don't we talk about briefly how or why rather the birds survived so why do you reckon the birds survived hmm oh because they can move around really that's interesting that's not that's not a bad idea <laughs> they can that's... move somewhere warm and they can move like they're much quicker right so it's actually uh it's not actually flight that that sort of thing that gave them the that gave them the advantage apparently it's food which i kind of i kind of alluded to earlier so if 
th- these birds um, were sort of moving towards uh, toothless beaks and uh, feathers and, and, and all of that sort of stuff, right? And a part of this sort of evolutionary move was a more varied diet. And as I was saying earlier, if you have a more varied diet, then you are more likely to survive an event like this because you're... You, you Okay, so for example, if an anteater were to if there was a, a, an extinction event of ants <laughs> the anteater would be screwed obviously yeah. ants do so much for for so many different parts of our food web like it would be catastrophic if ants were to disappear but the anteater was out immediately just out yeah other animals that eat ants but also eat other things could be fine they could rely hev- more heavily on another food source but then that would dwindle but then hopefully they would fill a niche of the ants food webs are complicated you food webs are one of those things where you think ah i take this out and it will no no any calculation no. or estimation you make on a food web is wrong. Yeah, I can promise you that. It's like a Jenga tower, <laughs> you just all fall down. It's just it's incredibly complex. So they changed their sort of skull shape and lost their teeth, and the tissues on their faces sort of changed as they started to eat more fruits and seeds and other plants. And I think they also they were also sort of having insects and other small things. You know, birds have that diet today but because they were moving towards uh, more fruits and seeds and other plant foods, they were probably more able to uh, more able to survive that mass extinction Mm. because while a bunch of plants did die out some survived and if you're able to eat those that's honestly probably a better source of Mm. energy rather than having to rely on it it, it's it's another step in the process right so if you're a fox you eat say a rabbit right now a rabbit can just eat whatever is growing in the ground a fox has to make sure that there is enough food to sustain the rabbits so that there are enough rabbits to sustain the the fox right (laughs) So there's just that extra step, which makes it that, that slight bit harder, potentially. So, yeah, I mean, these, uh, apparently, so according to Ryan Felis, or Felice, or Felice, uh, he is an anatomist at UCL. Very, very smart person, clearly. <laughs> he has said, all the things that make birds birds were already in place well before the mass extinction. So when the extinction hit, obviously birds had been developing all of these different sort of adaptations for right. a while, and it it clearly gave them that edge that let them survive. So not necessarily flight, uh, but probably more just the versatility of birds. Because, you know, uh, I mean, if you think about birds, they are quite they can be quite versatile in their diets and, mm-hmm. and in their sort of niches. I mean, think of Darwin's finches, right? They, 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 that's like the sort of quintessential idea of different birds developing different beaks for different niches. But also, you've got some birds that are highly specialized and other birds that can be slightly more varied. I mean, you could see the same across yeah. the animal kingdom, but birds are quite good you know in in that respect because they've got their feathers for their warmth they can fly and move around to different places as you said luke and they can eat nuts seeds insects bunch of different things and so it's it 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 just gave them that edge that made them sort of essentially just manage to survive longer than the non-avian dinosaurs Mm -hmm. i think it says here uh uh, particularly when sort of animals started to die out uh, other animals started to die out a lot beaked birds were able to eat seeds um and a lot more efficiently than other animals and so that that basically let them last until the vegetation started coming back uh, and obviously beaks aren't just the only thing that gave them the edge there were there, there are so many reasons this is if you try to put it pin it down to one thing you're just getting it wrong there's there, it's so complex yeah but that is that is roughly why the birds may have survived because they are able they have beaks and um they are able to digest and break down seeds which you know if you think about it we think about we think about pumpkin seeds and other kinds of seeds like that but a lot of seeds don't want you to eat i mean most seeds all seeds don't want you to eat them basically <laughs> right you know seeds don't want to be destroyed yeah and so they're tough on the outside and we eat the ones that are easy to eat, but there are other seeds that are harder to eat, and these birds were clearly able to get into them, yeah. which gave them that edge. Mammals obviously had the edge of being mm, warm-blooded and not so reliant on the external temperature as maybe other other sort of creatures at the time were. Also, they could burrow and were smaller as well, which was a big help. So they survived. Birds survived. Crocodiles are just good at what they do. Mm-hmm. Those those guys just uh, they will kill and they will kill anything. They are very good at what they do. I, mm. I am almost entirely terrified of crocodiles and alligators oh. and, and anything. Not in a, not in a. Oh my god, I don't want to near one. In a, I know what you can do, 
and I'm not gonna push you. I'm not gonna mess with you. Yeah, like I'm not gonna yeah. mess with a hippo. You know? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I value my life enough to not do that. You know, I, I I recognize how good they are at killing. So that is the story of how the dinosaurs went extinct. Oh. But there's just one more thing. Uh oh. To quick fire quiz. <laughs> oh, dun, no. dun dun dun. End of the world edition. I have retained nothing. So the rules of the quick fire quiz are the same <laughs> as always. I'll ask one question, one question between the two of you. The first person to buzz in with the correct answer wins. What do they win, Jamp? A, a big old tap from the asteroid. No, Ooh. no, mm. that would affect everyone. That's very well, bad. Yes, mm. get out of the way, Luke. What's your buzzer? Rar. Jamp, what's your buzzer? <laughs> The question for you is, when did the dinosaurs go extinct? Rawr. Luke? 225 million years ago? Not quite. Oh. Jamp? Oh, rawr. 60 million years ago. Oh, close. Rawr. Luke? 90 million years ago. No, no, no. Ago. Jamp was closest. Oh. 65 million years ago. Literally one away. 66 million years ago. Rawr. Ding, ding, ding. That is correct. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Roughly 66 million years ago is when we stopped seeing dinosaurs yeah. in the fossil record, hinting that they died out. Pretty quickly then. Obviously, mm. dinosaurs did not go completely extinct because we have birds, avian dinosaurs. Mm. Still kicking, still flying, Very still nice. flapping, still swimming, all this cool stuff that birds do. But that is it from us this week. Before we go, we would like to thank all of our patrons with a very special thank you to executive producers Rosa Rodriguez and Danito. And thank you for watching. You can find the four references for this episode down in the description. Subscribe for new episodes every Sunday. And why not leave us a nice wee comment? You can support the pod at patreon.com forward slash SciGuys or you can find and contact us at SciGuysBot on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, here on YouTube and at SciGuys on TikTok too. Or you can send us an email at SciGuysPod at gmail.com. That's SciGuysPod at gmail.com. SciGuysPod. At gmail.com. You can follow me at NotCory everywhere. You can follow me at Jamkin everywhere. You can follow me at Luke Cutforth everywhere. Goodbye. Oh my god, what's that in the sky? It looks like it's 10 kilometers wide and coming down. Oh no! Oh. <laughs>